Good afternoon, everyone. Dips observed in unadjusted measurements in land-based U.S. weather stations in 2015, marking a shift to many ice age conditions. We'll take a look at 15 different locations. They all show the same trend. From 2014, there's a significant dip in the temperatures if you're looking at the unadjusted data. Now, you know this spring also has been incredibly cold across the Northeast United States, shattering thousands of cold records across the Southeast U.S., Central Area and the Great Lakes. And then we take a look at these satellite temperatures that they're basing warmest year ever on, and they can't even agree. If it's such a precise science and they're calling the warmest year ever by two-tenths of a degree, we get five different measurements from five different satellites. Which one are they using? The warmest year ever was 1998. If the difference in all these satellite measurement temperatures is showing a downtrend, how can it possibly still be showing warming? That is a blatant lie. While discussing global temperatures, we need to take a closer look at the land stations compared to the satellite data. So this is what you get with the satellite data. There's five different sets of information coming across. And you'll notice that they all vary in the degrees. So on the RSS to the GISS is a full one-tenth degree difference, but they're measuring on the same day at the same time. So over a year, we're going to get a divergence in temperature, yet we're told it's the warmest year ever. So let's take a look at the actual difference. This might be a little bit easier for you. These are spread out. If you subtract the difference in the noise from those five different measurements, you're going to come up with this graph right here. You can clearly see in 2016 it's showing a downtrend. So taking that into consideration, overall, it is showing cooling, yet... NOAA seems to be pulling from the highest measured satellite data set. There's got to be an agenda out there. A subscriber of mine sent this link to a website that has a full rundown on all the U.S. weather stations, land-based, unadjusted temperature measurements through 2015, showing a downtrend in so many locations that I can't believe this wouldn't make the news in itself. Let's run these down. You make your own choice at the end. I'm just going to present the information to you. So you notice in the box, it shows which state it's in. This is in Missouri. And it just shows the average mean temperature from January to December of any given year. Now you might think that was anomalous. And then you jump over to New York and you see the same drop off. And this is in Central Park. So you see the same drop off again. And then this spring, there's been record lows across the entire New York area, New York State, New York City. Boston, the entire Northeast has been shattering hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of cold records, hard freeze damaging crops. But that cold is also pushing down into North and South Carolina, Georgia, Tennessee area. So you're going to start to get record cold temperatures down there as well. This is snow totals here. And when you look at this, it's almost unbelievable. This is the 14th of April coming up here and they're going to be having temperatures down in the teens. And these are some of the highs that are pushing through there at the high at 27 degrees Fahrenheit. That's still below freezing for the high. It just continues on and on and on. And this is the winter that will not end. So you start to see how those New York temperature measurements are showing cooling because it is cooling. And if we jump over to North Carolina and we start getting a little bit further down the, the coast there, you'll see the same thing drops in temperature significantly off there and you will see the same southeast u.s drops in temperature record cold especially in augusta when they were having the golf tournament down there atlanta georgia near re record cold going back to 1880 it's occurring again and again missouri these deep winter troughs pushing down that make no sense there was snow in mexico that killed those two million butterflies because it snowed down at 19 degrees north latitude about three weeks ago. Great Lakes, not any different. Freezing rain, ice, sleet, snow. Temperatures well below freezing there this late in the year. And these temperature dips are not limited just to the Northeast US and the Great Lakes area. We go down to Louisiana and we see the same exact drop-offs happening. Louisiana again. Here we go, Montana. Montana again. North Dakota. We start to see 
you know, areas on the borders with Canada getting cooler. Uh, there was an enormous amount of cold records broken through Canada, which I'll do another video on. That was just unbelievable snow and cold. Even for Canada, they were talking about how cold it was up there. Now, if you think those individual data points are cherry picked or they don't matter, let's take a look at the average percentage of days over 95 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, these are all the U.S. land stations. As you can clearly see, the 1930s, when the Dust Bowl era was around, there were many more days above 95 degrees Fahrenheit. There was that peak in the 1950s, but we're starting to drop back off again. So this warmest year ever, I think we need to go back to the 1930s and compare and really see which one was the warmest year ever. Average percent of days over 100 Fahrenheit. I wanted to bump it up a little bit. Again, these are all the U.S. temperature stations. You'll notice the same trend, 1930s was the warmest ever. And then we come down to today and we're not even close to the 1950s either. And we're even below the 1980s. So let's jump right into the modern era, 1979. Satellite temperatures going back to 79 show clearly that 1998 was the warmest year in the satellite era. Yet we're told that it's this year. Now here's the interesting thing. 2015 should have been warmer because there was supposedly a super Nino, which never evolved either. So with the powerful El Nino, should have made temperatures rise and spike, but it didn't, which shows that the world is actually getting cooler. Now when this La Nina picks up at the end of the year and we go cruising into 2017, there's going to be significant cooling. This graph here, global 2 meter temperature anomaly. Where do you look back on the graph and see that it was warmer than today? I'll let you take a look and circle the little areas that you think were warmer than today. Up above six tenths of a degree, we're currently around two tenths of a degree. So follow the red line and make your own opinion on that one. This is the University of Alabama Huntsville satellite temperatures here showing 1998 as well as 2010 warmer than today. So please remember as satellite temperatures are talked about, you have the five different data sets here, the varying different temperature degrees that each of them shows. And then even in NASA, and remember that 2014 warmest year ever, NASA is only 38% sure because of the differences in all the satellite readings that it was the warmest year ever. They're not even 100% sure. They're not even 98% or 99% or even 95% sure. They are 38% sure. That means that they're over 60% sure that they're wrong. Let's put it that way. When we're talking about ocean surface oscillation temperatures, this is a 60 year pattern for the Pacific Ocean and the Atlantic Ocean. You'll notice that when these two are cooling, going into the coolest part of their phase and we get into a grand solar minimum, the earth cools significantly. You'll see the same anomalies happening in 1840s, 1670, 1380AD. We need to go back to 560AD and we'll find it around 90AD as well. So it is a pattern that's discernible. Now all the gas giants begin aligning on one side of the solar system. These unexplainable cold events are going to be occurring. As both oceans go cold, we enter the La Nina and we start getting into the same setup that we've seen again in the 1600s, ushering in a mini ice age. So over the next couple of years, you're going to see anomalous cold events that are just unexplainable. You might even see snow in late May, blizzards in early September, things like this, uh, extreme cool summers and if there's more volcanic eruptions which always accompany grand solar minimums we will experience a year without a summer and global food production will be minimized now 2019 is the rollover year when the earth gets on the same side of all the gas giants in that particular configuration when they're all setting up to end on the one side of the solar system we will begin the mini ice age that is the crossover line approximately may of 2019 the intensification is actually going to shock you how fast it's going to cool and the effects you will see when it does get into the winter of 2019 this is where power grids will start to go down there will be crop losses globally and people will freeze to death in their homes 
When we get into 2023, this is where the gas giants are aligned on the other side of the solar system, which we saw that same exact alignment with the two cooling oceans. We saw it in the 1600s. We saw it back 90 AD, the intense 1300s. It was around 400 BC as well. This is going to usher in a minimum two to three degrees Celsius drop globally. And I am going to say that the society we know today will not exist any longer. The way we grow food will have to change radically and quickly if we're going to continue to feed the global population. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. These temperature measurements are definitely showing that something is cooling. I can't believe it's not on the news. It's still pushing forward with this warming agenda, which makes no sense other than global depopulation. Without warning the people what's going on. I could see how the governments don't want to cause panic in advance, but they should at least be leaking some dribble of information that it's getting cooler to let people prepare. If we think about the math, this is less than six years away. I hope you do have a plan B.